السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهدي ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن نبينا وحبيبنا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تبارك وتعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لسان يفقه قولي ربي زدني علما My elders, my brothers, my youngsters, my sisters Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has enabled us once again that we come to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to express our servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to express our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our beloved master, our beloved creator, our beloved Lord, our Allah almighty so therefore we express our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this great bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for this great favor of Allah ta'ala, for this great mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bear in mind, without the support, without the ability, without the mercy of Allah ta'ala, a person cannot worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a person cannot have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a person cannot draw nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So once we have a chance to do so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has definitely intended good with us. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us provision. My brothers, my elders, academic year has started in our country. Today, the 13th of September, and end of the second week of the academic year. As us Muslims are concerned, in every situation of our life, in every moment of our lives, in every position of our lives, Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they have given us guidelines, they have given us instructions, they have shown us the path that as a Muslim, as a human, how should we behave? How should we make plans and procedures? How should we make our aims? And how to move forward in life? Now as far as the education is concerned, education is the backbone of a society. Education is the backbone of a nation. Without education, we can never progress. Without education, we can never achieve our goals. Without education, we can never lead the society. We have no education, others will lead us. Once we have education, then we will become the leaders and the others will become the followers. So therefore, as far as the education is concerned, it's crucial, it's very important. And especially when talking about Islam, Islam has given so much importance to the education that our first revelation begins with the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is Iqra. We all know that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was declared a prophet by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala publicly announced that he is the prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in order to do that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the first revelation to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that iqra, recite, read, study. So at least to a Muslim, we don't have to explain the importance of education. Because the first revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us regarding the importance of education. 
And on top of that, our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has ordered us, has informed us, has guided us, has instructed us in the hadith by saying, Talabul ilmi faridatun ala kulli muslim. That as far as seeking knowledge is concerned, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, it's a faridah, it's an obligation upon every muslim, men and women. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, Talabul ilmi faridatun ala kulli muslim. Seeking knowledge, it's a farida. It's an obligation upon every Muslim. So therefore, as far as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is concerned, as far as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is concerned, Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they have clearly instructed us regarding the importance of education, regarding the importance of seeking education. Because the reality of education is that, that you want to rise in the society, you want the society to follow you. You want to be the leader of the society. You want to lead a society without education. You can never do that. Every September, the new education year starts. As Muslim students and Muslim parents, we have some duties to perform. As Muslim students and as Muslim parents, we have some obligations. And we must take those responsibilities very seriously in order to be a successful nation in order to be a successful community in order to be able to lead others and in order to be a exemplary leaders for the community and if we are not going to take that seriously then what will happen is that the others will lead us will just become the blind followers will just become like the normal public Besides just living in the society, we won't have any position in the society. We won't have the chance of leadership in the society. We won't be able to lead the people in the society. So others will say, others will lead, and we have no option but to follow. <coughs> so therefore, education is the crucial part of a Muslim's life, a crucial part of a human's life. Without education, we cannot move forward. We cannot develop. Without the skills, we cannot move forward. Without the skills, we cannot lead the society. So therefore, whenever the new academic year starts, it becomes crucial for the Muslim community. And especially as the students and the parents. Bear in mind, as far as the education is concerned, education is a teamwork. There is three teams, they work together, in order to educate a child. Without the teamwork, the education can never progress. A child can never progress in his education. The dream of the parents can never be successful. The dreams of the teachers can never be achieved. So therefore, as far as the game of education is concerned, it's a great game of three groups of people. Number one, parents. Number two, teachers, and number three, students. As far as the parents are concerned, parents are the one who sent their children to the places of education. So that's the duty of the parents, that every parent must send their children to the places of education. And particularly in England is concerned, from the age of three or from the age of five, up until the age of 19, the government has made it mandatory that every child must attend the places of education. And as far as our deen is concerned, our deen also supports that. Because our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has declared 14 centuries ago, Talabul ilmi fariratun ala kulli muslim, that seeking knowledge is obligatory upon every muslim. So therefore, as far as the parents are concerned, they should must send their children to the places of education. That's the first duty of the parents. Number two, when the parents are in the places of education, the teachers who have these students, they have these students as a trust on their hands, as a trust on their position. This is why the profession of teaching is a position of trust. The parents, the millions of parents all over the country, 
They have trusted the teachers with their children, with their kids, with their sons and daughters. So therefore, as far as the teachers are concerned, they are in the position of trust. Parents cannot educate. Even though if they are educated parents, they are not teachers, they are parents. So therefore, they have brought the child to the place of education. So therefore, now is the crucial duty of a teacher to take care of that particular child and teach the child properly and hold his position as the position of trust. That I am holding this child as a trust on me. The parents have left this child in my possession in order to educate this child. And number three, the duty is the duty of the child. That the child must understand this, that my parents, they have left me in this school. They have sent me to the school. They have sent me to the teachers. And parents have an ambition regarding me. They want me to excel in education. They want me to advance in education. So therefore, as far as the education is concerned, education is a game of three parties. The parents, the teachers, and the students. Parents send their children to schools. Colleges and the universities and the madrasas. Teachers take care of the students. They educate them. And number three, the teachers, whatever they need to teach according to the syllabus, they teach it to the child. So therefore, parents send, teachers stay, and then teachers supply the education, the ta'aleem, to the students, and the students, they learn. Our deen gives crucial importance <laughs> regarding the education. So as the new year has begun, as Muslim parents and as Muslim students, the first and foremost duty upon us is that we must get our aims sorted. That what my child should be studying, what the Muslim children should be studying. Bear in mind, as Islam is concerned, Islam gives importance to all the education. Because of the secular society nowadays, because the secular society doesn't teach the teachings of deen, so therefore in our community we have two types of teachings, two types of education. We say one is religious education and one is secular education. In reality, education is one. A person can be a scientist, have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that scientist has become a scientist of deen. A person can be a technician and have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that technician has become a technician of deen. A person can be a pilot and has faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that person has become the pilot of the deen. A person can be a big businessman and does his business according to Quran and Sunnah, now this person has become a person of the business of deen. So there is nothing in Islam that we segregate the education. As far as education is concerned, it rotates around Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore in the first ayat revealed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered, Iqra bismi rabbika That as far as the education is concerned, education must be with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. An education which does not allow you to recognize your creator. That is just information. That is just basic knowledge. An education which lets you recognize your Lord, lets you recognize your creator, lets you recognize your master, lets you recognize your Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the actual education. That is called ta'aleem. You don't even recognize your Lord, your own master, your own creator. And you call yourself, you're an educated person. Your beginning is wrong. So therefore, you are not educated. Yes, you may have gathered and stored a lot of information in your memory. That's good. But as far as the ta'aleem is concerned, as far as knowledge is concerned, as far as divinity is concerned, as far as recognizing the master is concerned, you are not there. You are at the zero point. So therefore, as far as the aim is concerned, Muslim parents and Muslim students, we must set the aim that what my child is going to study and up to what level. 
As a Muslim is concerned, we should never ever na'udhu billah underestimate ourselves. Every child matter. Every child is a mashallah hidden gem. Never underestimate anybody. Somebody might be a bit weak in memorization. But subhanallah, in thinking, this person is so advanced. Somebody might be a bit slow in thinking. But subhanallah, in memorization, he's like photographic memory. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put a bit of shortcoming in one side of a child, then on the other side, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has definitely gifted. If a child, for example, a bit weak in learning, then that child, subhanallah, might be outstanding in PE. In the physical education. If a child might be a bit less thinking and creative in his education, but subhanallah, in the IT, he might be in a massive IT technician in, the, in that sector. So therefore, as far as every child is concerned, every parent is concerned, we must set our goals. That how our child should progress and up to what extent. And as a Muslim is concerned, we should always aim high. Never ever underestimate ourselves. Bear in mind, as far as our resource is concerned, our main resource is the power of Allah Ta'ala. We don't rely on the books. Of course, we study the books. We don't rely on the websites. We don't rely on the internet. Of course, we use them. But our main source of knowledge is Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, Innama bu'istu mu'allima. I have been sent by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala as a teacher. And in the other hadith, he says, Innama ana qasimun, wallahu yu'di. That indeed I, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is only the distributor. Provider is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So everything, where does it come from? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Provider, bestower is Allah ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, Innama ana qasim. Indeed, I am a distributor of everything. But the provider, wallahu yu'di. Provider is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just a little example make it clear. Once a man approached to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, saying to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, give me this much of money. And I need this. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, on that day, he never had anything in his possession. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to this person, go to Medina, and go to the bazaar and the market of Medina, and go to that such and such person of that shop, of that market, and whatever you need from there, take it, and tell that man to write it on my name. Are you understanding, Ustad? This is our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's the month of Rabi'ul Awwal as well. If I get a chance, I'll talk about Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well. Just as a glimpse, try to understand the connection of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the Ummah. Allah Ta'ala has declared, an nabiyyu awla bil mu'minina min anfusihim. You know, actual you and I, it's not the physical appearance. Actually, you and I is the soul. Because this physical body, once it's in the grave, it's rotten. It doesn't remain. But actually, you and I, which is the spirit, which is the ruh, it remains forever. In fact, the ruh never dies. Yes, People ask you regarding the spirit, tell them spirit is the command of your Lord. So actually, you and I is the spirit, not the body. Body rotten in the grave. So Allah Ta'ala has declared in the Holy Quran that you want to know the position and the rank of my Prophet and how close he is to you guys. Allah said, An nabiyyu awla bil mu'minina min anfusihim. That Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is close to every believer than their own soul to their body. We have the soul inside and we have the body. We have the soul, hence our body is active. We are alive. We are not dead. Once the soul goes out, we are dead body. People will prepare us for janaza, and then within a day they will bury us. Halas, end of story. So that in the case, the most important part in the body is the spirit. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said, "An nabiyyu awla bil mu'minina min anfusihim." Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam is more close to every believer than their own soul to themselves. So inside our body, we have the spirit. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is more close to us than our own spirit to our body. So as far as Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is concerned, and as far as Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is concerned, Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they both has encouraged us 
in fact commanded us that not to lose hope not to underestimate yourself because you are the one created by Allah whatever you need provided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this man came and he said ya rasulullah give me this Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam on that day he never had any possession so he said go to that market of Medina and buy it from that shop sayyidina umar was there sayyidina umar radiyallahu ta'ala who was a very outspoken person in the hadith rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said that in the previous nations there used to be muhaddath Muhaddath are those people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly puts the truth in their heart and they proclaim with their tongue. So you do know Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, if there's anybody in my ummah like that, that's Umar. So you do know Umar radiallahu ta'ala and was always outspoken person. Whatever lied in his heart, so you do know Umar radiallahu ta'ala and without any hesitation, he said it. So so you do know Umar said, Ya Rasulullah, Allah ta'ala has not made you responsible. That you don't have it in your possession and you're telling this man to go to the shop and buy it on your name he takes it free and you're going to pay it later ya rasulallah allah ta'ala has not made you responsible for that upon hearing this prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam's face became red because rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam did not like this statement of sayyidina umar radiallahu ta'ala an. upon observing this this man said to prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam Anfiq ya Rasulallah wa la takhsha min zil arshi iqlala That ya Rasulallah wa messenger of Allah Spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And don't be afraid of the Lord of the throne That your wealth will decrease Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then became happy And he said bihada umirtu I have been ordained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that I, I Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam provide and Allah, I, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, distribute, and my provider is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, the first and foremost, the Muslim parents and Muslim children is that we should always be determined regarding what we have, that our Muslim children as well can achieve something which is higher than the other communities. Our Muslim children can also achieve something which the other communities may not achieve. So first and foremost, as Muslim parents and Muslim students are concerned, we should aim high. That we should strive and struggle. Our job is to struggle. Provider is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala is so kind and merciful. Allah has said, those people who will struggle for our sake, Allah ta'ala then said, لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ subulana. Allah never said, Lanah diyannahum sabilana. Sabil is one, and subul is plural. <coughs> Allah never said, I shall open up one way for them. In fact, Allah said, I shall open up many ways for them. Say, Subhanallah. If we struggle for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we aim high, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that I shall open ways for these people. So when our children are in the colleges, when our children are in the education centers, when our children are in the universities, when our children are in the schools, we as Muslim parents, as, as well as the children, we should both think high and aim high. That as far as the GCSE grades are concerned, my children should be having the highest grades. As far as the college grades are concerned, our children should be having the highest grades. As far as the university grades are concerned, our children should be having the highest grades. We Muslims must come out from this inferiority complex. Like in our language we say, Ham se kya hota hai? What can we do? We can do many things. Those of the communities of the world who are doing many things, they also have one brain, they also have two hands, they also have two legs. They don't have four hands, they don't have four legs, they don't have two heads, the same as us. So if the Chinese people are developing so much in the skills, if the Indians are developing so much in skills, why can we not? Why can we not? Of course we can. It's just that we have to bang that, that we can as one. Well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us that. Allah ta'ala has given us that talent. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us that talent. The current chief of Bangladesh, <coughs> Dr. Muhammad Yunus, Regarding his ideologies, you may have differences of opinion. That's totally up to you. But this man is someone who is amazing. Amazing in a sense that he has won the medal, Nobel Peace Prize. And on top of that, this person has achieved 
internationally recognized 48 awards. How many? 48 awards. He's 84. The way he talks is like a young kid. The way he moves around, he's like he doesn't have any illnesses. He was a lecturer in one of the best universities of America. He's a person who my phone and your phone doesn't ring on his phone. Phone calls comes to him from Bill Clinton, from Hillary Clinton, from Tony Blair, because he's a person of that caliber. But when he speaks, very simple. Just last week I had heard one of his lecture in the University of Oxford. So he's talking to the students of Oxford, very simply. He said, take this out of your mind that I can't do anything. Built in that you can do everything. Are you understanding me? That take this out of your memory that you can't do anything. Of course, built in that you can do many things and everything. So as us Muslims are concerned, we have to adopt that positivity that of course we can do many things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has built in ourselves those capacities. It's just we need to open up and come out from those backwarded thoughts that we can't do anything. We can do many things. And another thing he says and that really admires me, and he says that as, as youngsters, you should never ever have this thought that I am a job seeker, that I want to have a degree. Me and Moana are having a cross connection. I'm talking loudly and he's coughing loudly. So let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon the both. Say Ameen. I am getting louder and he's getting louder as well. So both of us having a cross connection. Moana have no offense, yeah? Allahu Akbar. So he says that whenever you have a course and you're doing that course, now don't think that you are going to seek a job through that course. Don't be a job seeker. In fact, be a job provider. That I should be so high in the education that once I graduate from colleges and the universities, I am not going to do only a job five to seven or a job from nine to five. I will be doing something great that many other people, many other people will come to me and I can provide jobs to them. So therefore, the first and foremost, my brothers, especially my youngsters, that we as Muslim, we should set our aims that if others are doing, I can do better than them. If they are passing their GCSEs with the grade seven and eight, I can pass my GCSEs with grade eight and nine, top grades. If others are, mashallah, finishing their college and the university with no good grades, I should be passing with the outstanding grades. We can do that. We can do that. It's just we need to change our thoughts. It's just we need to change our culture. We just need to think that we are backward. We can't do it. We can do it. So therefore, the force and the foremost is that our aim should be hard. That inshallah, with the will of Allah, bear in mind, as Muslims are concerned, we don't rely on ourselves. Our reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our provider is Allah ta'ala. That there isn't any creature in the, in the surface of the earth, but Allah ta'ala has taken the responsibility of providing provision to that. So therefore, as us Muslims are concerned, we must have these positive thoughts because our provider is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'll mention something as a joke. But that joke actually has a lesson in it. Once there was a meeting amongst the animals of jungle. Now you don't ask me a question. Sheikh, when was that meeting? Where was that meeting? Who related to that story? I can give you the chain of narration, all of that. I'm just mentioning as a story just to take a lesson. So animals of jungle are there. The giraffe is there. The elephant is there. The horse is there. The lion is there. And all the others are there. And they're all having a debate that I should be the leader of the jungle. <clears throat> Giraffe, what's your dalil? What's your proof? I have a long neck. I am very tall. So therefore, I should be the leader of the jungle. Okay. Elephant, I should be the leader of the jungle. Why? Massive body. I can pull out the trees with my trunk. Okay. Horse, what's your dalil? What's your proof that you want to be the leader of the jungle? I can race very fast. No one can race me. Kamal, why do you want to be the leader of the jungle? Oh, nothing in my body is straight. Everything is bent. All the bones, all the limbs of the camel is all bent. So I should be somebody mesmerizing. I should be the leader of the jungle. Meanwhile, 
The lion comes and the lion roars. Everybody can quiet. Lion says, no wonder if you want to be the leader of the jungle anymore. All scared. No, 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 no. Why? No, you are there, we can't. Now they hesitated asking lion, why do you want to be the animal, the leader of the jungle? The lion gives the answer to them saying that all of you wanted to be the leader of the jungle, but you never had faith in yourself. You're all scared of me. That's why as soon as I roared, you all scared and you took your words back. You swallowed your words. Now, none of you want to be the leaders of the jungle. But I am leader of the jungle. Why? Even though in size, I am smaller than you. Even though I am smaller than you in size. But I am the leader of the jungle. Why? Because I believe in myself. I think I can do it. So therefore, I'm doing it. So as Muslims are concerned, our aim should be high that we could do it. And Alhamdulillah, we have done it. We have done it. You read the Islamic history and the great performance of the Muslim personalities. Amazing, amazing. Your Oxford, your Cambridge never even existed. But subhanAllah, our Al-Azhar University existed. The first university to be made in the surface of the earth was by a Muslim lady called Fatima in Morocco. So therefore, as far as us are concerned, we should have our aim high and then rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, responsibilities. As Muslim students, we have responsibilities. And as Muslim parents, we have responsibilities. As far as the Muslim students' responsibilities is concerned, that get your purpose right. Get your purpose right. Why you are there in the college? Why you are there in the university? Why you are there at school? What's the reason behind? The main objective is to succeed in your education you are doing everything else but as far as the education is concerned you are the last one you are doing everything else but as far as education is concerned you have the least focus on it muslim parents once you have sent the kids to that school this is not end of your story this is not the end of your responsibility teachers and parents connection is crucial every single week if not every two weeks, if not every four weeks, if not at least every term, have a meeting with your, with your children's teacher. Go to the parents' meetings. Go to the parents' meetings. Insist them to write the reports. Read the reports. If the reports of your child is very good, mashallah, give them gifts. Encourage them. And if the reports are not that good, go have a word with the teacher. That my child, I try my level best at home as well. I make him sit down at home. I make her sit down at home. I provide revision for them. I sit down with them. But why my child couldn't do better as the other kids can? Go have a word with them. So the second thing, especially Muslim parents are concerned, we must have that connection with our teachers. We go and liaise with them and talk to them and discuss with them regarding the progress of the education of my child. If that is in the place, then inshallah, with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Muslims are not here to become failures. We are always successful people. We must succeed in this world. And inshallah, with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we'll succeed in the hereafter as well. So therefore, in the beginning of the new academic year, September 2024, I'd like to give these two pieces of advice to my Muslim parents as well as the Muslim students. Number one, aim high. Aim high. Never ever let yourself be afflicted with that inferiority complex that I can't do it. It's too hard. No, 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 no. It's not too hard. It's easy. Allah has given you this, mashallah. You can do it. And number two, Muslim parents and Muslim children, we must understand our responsibility. The first responsibility of the Muslim student is that we must excel in education. And as far as the Muslim parents are concerned, we should always maintain that liaison with the teachers that what is the progress of my child? I want to have an update every term. I want to have an update every week. I want to have an update every fortnight, every month at least, if not at least every term. And finally, many of you won't like me saying this, the final one. From now on, don't just pull out a child from education. One day, fine how much? If you take a child, do you know how much fine? 162. Birmingham City Council has imposed from August 19, this year. August 19th, 
2024 that if you take a child out of school without a valid reason and go to Pakistan, Bangladesh, both of the parents will be fined 162, 162. <coughs> and we have shared that in our groups. So therefore, always be careful. Fine is there as well, and losing your own child for our education, that's not very nice. And with regards to somebody dies in Pakistan or Bangladesh, people take for whole month, maximum five days, they have allowed. Maximum how many days? Go to the Birmingham City Council website and read all of that. England is not relaxed anymore like it used to be before. It's got very strict. And I think the country wants to be back to its track again, how it used to be before the 80s. So therefore, always be careful. Take the education as the first priority and inshallah aim high and fulfill the responsibilities. Inshallah we shall rise again. Inshallah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta astaghfiru wa atubilek. Please wait for the adhan and then it's finished.